Speaker, I'd like to um, go ahead and call for a motion to enter back into regular session, please. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 I just want to, uh, for the record, state in executive session we did discuss personnel matters and we also discussed threatened and pending litigation. We will now go back to the regular business listed on the agenda and we will go to approval of the minutes for February 22nd, 2012 regular meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Yes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. I will now call for approval of minutes for the February 16th, 2012 special meeting. Thank you. Is there a second? Second to the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We will now go to approval of the meeting agenda. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing that all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We will now go to approval of the consent agenda. A motion for approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? Seeing that all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, motion passes. We will now go to public requests. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak for two minutes on any subject not currently listed on the agenda, this would be the time to do so. Okay, thank you. We now will go to department requests and reports. Item number one will be department updates. Oh, sorry. oh. <laughs> she raised her hand. Sorry, Cindy. Oh, you don't have Cindy. I know you can. <laughs> Thank you, Ruben. Thank you, Cindy. If you're um, going to do a department update, just maybe we could just kind of streamline it. If you guys just want to sit in the front row in order of who's going to go next, that way we can just keep going. Ruben, you'll be next.
see that you just uh, finished off two uh, GIS classes that I hosted here in uh, PSEP or Dispatch. Um, that was very successful. Uh, I got really good reports on that from the students that were there. Uh, there were students from all over the state. So they were extremely happy with the classes that we hosted. And they're looking forward to me doing this again. Oh, I'm not sure about that yet. <laughs> so it was very tough in a, in a sense. Um, and I just upgraded some new software. Still learning it. Thank you, Ruben. I heard those classes were wonderful and that you really set a good standard for them, so we appreciate you doing that. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anything that hasn't been posted in accounts payable, if there's anything that's 
going to be posted after today or today, that will change that figure, and that will change the general fund also. Okay? And uh, that's all I really have to report. Uh, we second half taxes, again, we're hoping they'll come in pretty soon here in April and May, and that will change the general fund big time.
courtroom two at district court. So um, if you can be there, that would be wonderful. Um, so that was the 29th? The 29th. And the good news is we received a, um, an email letter from the Annie E. Casey Foundation, and they have invited us to um, submit a letter of interest for participating in um, their initiative to reduce juvenile incarceration and um, to really look at some um, solutions to deep end um, programming. And so we are submitting the initial letter of interest um, by the 16th and that will be in an email format and then by the um, end of the month we will need to submit a um, full letter of interest explaining our uh, program and what we are planning to do and how and why that fits with the, um, the KC uh, philosophy, their program and their priorities and um, also why we would be able to do the data collection and analysis and be a full functioning partner of the national initiative. So um, we will be working on, on those initiatives. Um, <clears throat> I did notice that the uh, Torrance County Juvenile Justice Board request for a vehicle is later in the, um, the agenda from um, the board's standpoint, I think we would prefer that this be withdrawn at this time until we um, have a more solidified um, agenda moving forward and a firm timeline, which we should have by um, the middle of the next month. And I'll stand for questions. <coughs> I'll start. Thank you, Pat, for your presentation. Um, so the letter of invitation that was received from the Casey Foundation is what we needed to to let us go ahead and put the letter of interest in there? It is. It's a selective um, solicitation, so you, you must be invited to, to um, apply. It's very positive. It's very positive. Yeah. Esther you. is over the moon. Good. I don't have any further questions, Commissioner? No. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Pat. Good morning, Good morning. or questions or uh, any um, appealing of uh, evaluations. Uh, this is what we have put in. There's a lot of other, several other counties that are doing it already. And uh, we put this insert in that will be going out to all the taxpayers, uh, the property owners, with their notices of value. It will be in a canary yellow, so it will be very noticeable. Um, and it's simplifies all of the state statute jargon on the back of the notice of value that we have to put on on there. So uh, we think this will help. We think we'll get a lot more uh, questions and participants, of, especially of the head of household exemptions, any veterans exemptions, um, and the uh, valuation freeze uh, for the low income over 65 or, or low income disabled. So we're hoping this will help uh, with because those are the only ways per state statute that we can really do to help decrease any property tax values or you know to help them to help our citizens and the uh, and all the property owners of the county. So I just wanted you to see that as soon as we get this because I'm hoping that I will be able to put this in a letter form 
and it will be hopefully in our two local newspapers next week or week after, so that will give a little more. Last year, we even went around the county, Marianne and I <coughs> went out and put flyers up in places that we could, like in municipal buildings and uh, any place that we could put one where people could see that these are some of the things that they can apply for. Uh, in any way to help is that we can, you know, keeping the uh, keeping the tax their property tax values down some. So I just wanted to share that with you, and uh, that's uh, that's what we're doing. So April will be a very busy month for us with uh, the protest period, um, and then there's also an affiliate an assessor affiliate meeting in April, and then April 16th they will be doing the property tax division will be down doing the office evaluation. And uh, they do give you all a full report of that. Probably, it probably takes about 60 days before they get that report out because they send it out to, uh, you know, they don't send it out until they do all 33 counties. And so it takes them about 60 days to get the information out on uh, how we're doing. So that's all I have today. Any questions? I have one question, Betty. On the evaluation freeze, is that something that a lot of residents in Torrance County utilize? Um, I, you know, and I just finished with what I have now, and I haven't done a count yet. Um, I think we just have about, probably about a, a hundred of them. Not even a hundred, I don't think. I know we have more uh, every year, and that's one of the things that a lot of people don't know about, and that was one reason why we were putting this in there, too. Um, but uh, that, and from a meeting I was at on Monday, yeah, on Monday I was at a luncheon meeting and the uh, cabinet secretary of the Veterans Affairs was there and his presentation showed that we have 2,102 veterans living in Torrance County. And I know we do, and I would say I don't know how many of them are actually property owners and reside in their homes here in the county. Um, but we have nowhere near that uh, for veterans are getting their $4,000 exemption or if they're 100% disabled, or 100% disabled exemptions. And I don't know how to reach those either. Uh, I'm going to be talking to uh, the uh, cabinet secretary <coughs> and at least get to his office and ask them if there's something we can even give out to their different offices, you know, just statewide for something like this, an informational thing, so that they know they go to their county assessors <coughs> to uh, to ask for and get their any their four thousand dollar exemption, for example, and then a hundred, especially the hundred percent disabled, because they have, they don't pay the property tax, they only have to pay the soil conservation tax, which we're also getting rid of that too this year in this county at least. And so um, there's there's a lot of um, a lot of ways, and we, we don't know, that's why we're just trying to get out as many, as many ways as we can. I think this is an excellent um, piece of information to mail out, especially the valuation freeze, because I know a lot of people that could benefit from that. So I'm just going to read it real quick. Valuation freeze, if you are 65 years or older or permanently disabled at any age and had a total household income of $32,000 or less in the prior tax year, you may qualify for a property valuation freeze for your residence. Application must be submitted along with proof of income and or age and disability. Freezing your valuation will help minimize and increase property taxes and you must reapply every year. I think that's going to really help educate when you send these out because you might have applied for it, but you may not know that you need to do it every year. So I think that's, that's really wonderful. And one of the things we have done um, last year, and that's really helped too, and there are a couple of other counties that are doing that, and that's where we got the idea from, is that uh, all the people that had, a, that had had that freeze last year, we uh, send out a reminder letter as soon as we get the new forms um, in, the, in January. And we send a letter with the new form telling them that, you know, it's time to reapply. Because, of course, with head of household and your veterans positions, once they're established on your account, you don't have to do anything about it anymore because they stay there as long as you own the property. Do they have to come fill that form, fill out that form here? Or, like, could they have some blank forms maybe at the 
local VFW posts that they could pick up there and you know encourage their members if they qualify, or do they have to come get the blank form here? Well, no, they have to get a certificate from the Department of Veterans Affairs with their DD. 214. 214. 214. Thank you. Never can remember that one. I apologize. But uh, they have to get a cert certificate from them, and then they bring it to us, and we have to sign on the back of it, and uh, you know, to to get that one set up. So, and that's a that's a good idea too, because we could put we can put like this even with at places like that. And uh, we'll be getting a bunch of these, and like I said, this is just the draft, so it's not quite clean to do that, and I will get them out, and I'll be putting them in boxes uh, to everybody's boxes, <coughs> so you all can have them, and if you want to get more, or make copies of them, or put them anywhere you think, or... Uh, even on your website? And uh, this form, we can put this on the website as well, yeah. because we do have all the forms, all the applications for head of household, and then, of course, they are part of your notice of value as they are part of your, well, actually part of the tax bill, too, because they talk about all of those things at tax time as well. They are, on the on your notice of value, you can tear off part of the notice of value and send it back in to us with an address change or uh, that you want the head of household or all of that, and you can work for that as well. So we just keep trying to educate because we did find over the years, and a lot of the counties are doing it now because a lot of people don't know, and it is difficult to read. Well, first of all, the print's so small, which I can't read them very well on the, um, all the statute information, and then it is, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's kind of legal jargon, and it's hard to understand, well, what does that mean? So that's why we try to simplify this, and we're trying to get it out a lot more. Great, thank you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Lynn, before you sit down, I'll get some questions. Okay. Uh, just to have a better thought process, on a $1,000 exemption, I know you have a 2000 and a 4000 on a $100,000 home, how much does that give you a discount on your taxes? Your, uh, the $2,000 exemption, it's uh, around the $50 range. Around on 50? Your, yeah. Okay, so about on four thousand, a hundred bucks. About a hundred dollars on that, and then of course the hundred percent disabled debts, it reduces their value completely. Okay. 